Uh, for today, today being June 9th, can we have a roll call? Either one of you can do it. Here. <laughs> and a mic check. Just You're pass on this point. That's right here. Sorry. <laughs> Sorry. Chair Zink. Here. Kirk Redeen. Here. Scott Hopkins. Oh, I'm sorry. I thought he was here. Courtney J. Miller. Here. Stephanie Poole. Here. Howard Whitosh. Here. We have a quorum. Wonderful. Moving on to the first item of the agenda, which is public comment. Is there anyone from the board wishing to address the anyone from the public wishing to address the board for an item that is not on today's agenda? Seeing none come forward, I will close public comment and open up approval of the minutes from the previous meeting, which was Tuesday, May 27th. Mr. Chair? Yes. I believe the full board meeting minutes are going to be postponed to June 23rd. Perfect. So we would like a motion to do that, please. So moved. And is there a second? Second. Uh, second. There we go. All in favor of postponing the minutes? All right. Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. Moving on to item C, which is the consent calendar for June 2nd. Do we have a first and a second? Oh, uh, to first for first Kirk. by Kirk, second, second by, by Stephanie. Mr. Chair, item A, 122 South Voluntario Street was final granted final approval as submitted. Uh, item B at 128 Anna Kappa Street is granted final approval with conditions. Item C at 1255 Coast Village Road was granted final approval as submitted other review after final. Those were items were reviewed by Commissioner uh, Board Member Gradeen. Great. Any other discussion sorry. on that? Sorry. If not, I'll call for a vote. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Aye. Motion carries. Going on to today's content consent calendar, which is June 9th. Do we have a first and a second? First. We, first. we don't have those. Did we not have consent have today? No, we did. We did. Okay. Oh, okay. So, so Hopkins. we have a first by Scott and a second by uh, Courtney. And those items, item A, uh, US 101 from quarantine at a west city limit. Uh, that was a courtesy review only, and actually there were no comments. Uh, item B, 2314 Dale Lavinia Street was a, let's see here, uh, continued indefinitely to the staff hearing officer with positive comments. Those were both reviewed by uh, board members Gradine and Miller. Great. Is there any other discussion? If not, I'll call for a vote. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. Moving on to item D, which is announcements, requests by applicants for continuance and withdrawals. Mr. Chair, uh, the restroom facility project for Royal Bor Borough Beach at 2981 Cliff Drive will be reviewed by the Planning Commission on July 10th. Okay. So that's coming up. Uh, Chair Zink has offered to represent the board since he, since he will already be in attendance at Planning Commission for another project. And that's all I have. I, I believe City Planner Betty Weiss has uh, an announcement. Good afternoon, ABR. Nice to see you. I'm here to introduce our new Community Development Director, George Buell, if you'd like to come up. Um, I think you all know that I was in an acting capacity while the city was doing the recruitment and we're happy with uh, the fact that the city has concluded that recruitment and hired George Buell to join us. So I think he has a few minutes to um, talk with you all, just brief introduction. And um, George was just asking me, do they know what the council vote was on the stipends? And it, in case you hadn't heard, they have reinstated the stipends for starting July 1st with the, this coming fiscal year. <laughs> Very so. good. Well, first of all, do you know how to turn on the mics? There you go. <laughs> <laughs> Just because I was watching. <laughs> Honorable Chair, members of the board, I'm George Buell, and uh, I'll just give you a real quick rundown of my career path so that you understand where I'm coming from. And uh, uh, I'll start with the most recent prior to Santa Barbara, of course. I, from 2008 to 2014, I was Development Services Director with the City of Oceanside. And obviously another uh, coastal community with an airport with a harbor, uh, not nearly as um, 
shall we say, sophisticated in many respects as uh, Santa Barbara in terms of the rigor of the process. Uh, your board, as well as I believe the HLC, is uh, you know, right in the city charter. And uh, the, the, the residents of Santa Barbara value this type of review, which I think speaks highly of the community. Now, back to, back to Oceanside. Prior to Oceanside, I was city planner with the city of San Clemente, which is on the other side of Camp Pendleton. So I, was, I currently reside in, in San Clemente. Actually, technically today, I reside in Santa Barbara, but my wife and kids are still in San Clemente. <clears throat> but uh, from 2002 until 2008, I was in San Clemente. Prior to that, I was in the private sector in the Pacific Northwest working with a land development cons uh, consulting firm uh, just outside of Seattle. Prior to that, I was with the City of Fullerton as an environmental planner for about 10 years. And before that, I was private sector doing redevelopment consulting. That's when redevelopment was alive and well. And uh, prior to that, I uh, graduated from Cal State Fullerton with a degree in urban geography and health promotion, a minor in health promotion. And so that uh, gives you a little bit idea of my career path as well as my education. I'm a native Southern Californian. I was born in Long Beach, raised in Anaheim. and uh, except for the five years or so that I was in the Seattle area, uh, called us part of the state home. Mm -hmm. So with that, if you have any other questions, I'd be happy to answer or I was share. surprised that the city of Oceanside is actually one of the older cities on the kind of Southern California coast, isn't it? They, yeah, yeah. They were uh, incorporated, I believe. They just celebrated their 125th anniversary. Yeah. So. Santa Barbara's a little older, but not dissimilar. Yeah. yeah. Is San Clemente a charter city, or is it a general law city? San Clemente is general law. Okay. Yeah, Oceanside is charter. Mm -hmm. well, welcome. Well, thank you yeah, very much. Yeah, yeah. Thank you. Great. Well, wonderful. We have five more minutes to kill before the next project. <laughs> are, you, are you familiar with the Mission Cove project in Oceanside? Yeah. Yeah, my firm is working on that. Your firm? My firm. Your firm? Yeah, I'm the Are project you? manager on that now. You're with uh, I, it's RRM. RRM. Yeah. yeah. No. David Chacon left RRM. And, yeah. yeah. So I've taken the masthead there. Good firm. Good project. Yeah. yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Uh, Ms. Galarte is on her way down. Okay. Anything for the subcommittee report? I don't believe so. I guess we can pause for two minutes to get a cup of coffee. Yes. How do you spell Buell? Buell is B-U-E-L-L. And then if it's Buellton, you just add a T-O-N at the end. Except it's one L. I wonder Buell's if he's descended. Oh, it is? Buell is two L. Oh. Yeah, we were waiting for Pete. He's on the oh. way. Okay. Sorry, we said 315 sharp. Susan, did you get the vacation schedule ironed out? I've heard from, uh, I believe. Are we going? <laughs> oh, I didn't put. Kathy, yeah. we're ready to start. I'm going to reopen today, which is ABR for June 9th, and we are on item one, which is an overview of the new zoning ordinance. Want to introduce yourself and. Good afternoon, members of the ABR. I'm Beatrice Gallardi, and I'm a plan planner in the planning division, and I'm with Danny Cotto, senior planner and my supervisor. We're both managing this effort. Well, I'm managing, he's supervising. <laughs> so um, thank you so much for giving us some time on your agenda. Some of you may have heard already that the City Council has allocated funding and resources to take on a pretty comprehensive update of our zoning ordinance. We're calling the effort the ENZO for our new zoning ordinance, and we're excited to have these resources and commitment on the part of our decision makers because as many of you know, and you've been involved with projects in the city for many years, as well as the planners on our staff, we really feel that there's a lot of areas in our zoning ordinance that could be improved. 
So we're at the very beginning of the process. We um, have been allocated, like I said, monies to hire, we're going to hire a consultant to help us that has more experience with, with doing an effort such as this. We've amended our ordinance over the years many times, but we've never done like a comprehensive update. So in order to hire that consultant, we're going around to different groups, to the design review boards and to about 12 um, focus group type um, in the community and asking for their, just their very initial input as to hot topic items, what are those things that possibly frustrate you or could be improved in our zoning ordinance. Um, so the reason we're here today is one, we really want to invite you to be involved in this effort and let you know what the effort's about and to, to get any initial input, whether it be today, and, and I'll go through it in which ways. So I, don't, I believe you got the email with the Planning Commission staff report that might have had a list that looked something like this, zoning standards to be amended or zoning standards to be considered. Well, what it is, it's over the years, staff has kept a running list, either um, things that city staff thinks need amending or just feedback that we've gotten along the way. And it's just a long to-do list of if and, and when we could amend the zoning ordinance. These are some of the types of things we'd like to take on. So um, it's our starting working list to, to include in the scope of work for the consultant. So we, we would like you, if, when you have time later, whenever you're home and need to read something, to, to look at that and see if, if you agree with these things, um, anything that is um, blatantly missing. But another important, so I'm gonna go over this little handout right now, the, what the ordinance is. So the primary goals of the zoning ordinance update is, is really to restructure it, simplify it, update it to be more modern. As you know, our zoning ordinance, it's from 1957, and it hasn't been comprehensively updated. Some of the standards in our zoning code date back to the 20s and 30s, when it was like the building zoning code. Um, one of the big issues that we want to take on is really looking at the non-conforming buildings in the community. In 1975, there was a major down zone that changed large areas of single family zoning to a different zone. So while it met the intent of what they wanted to do at the time, which was to limit um, growth as far as residential and, and density, it had the unintended consequence that it really is prohibitive when people want to make improvements on the property, and you're all very familiar with that. That you have, you had one standard you met in the 50s or 40s, and now you come in and you want to do an addition, and you have a different, a different code standard. So we want to look at that. That's one of the key things we want to look at part of this update. We want to look at definitions, bring them up to date. Um, we want to look at uses, yards and setbacks, any allowed encroachments um, to see if, if they're appropriate or we need to change them. Um, another key component in this effort is we want to look at where we could possibly get some more administrative approval. And when we say administrative approval for certain things, it could be at a staff level, it could be at possibly a design review level, um, a different type of show review, whether it be an administrative show review. We don't know, I mean, we don't have the answers of how we're gonna get there, but we know we wanna look at, because um, what we've been hearing a lot from the community is um, streamlining and simplifying for those non-controversial simple things and possibly eliminate the number of modifications that people have to request. So that, that's a goal, but how we're gonna get there, we don't know yet. Um, we also want to evaluate parking standards, and that we know will be very controversial. So um, at a minimum, we know we want to take on looking at possibly like the commercial uh, restaurant standards. As you know, there's a fast food standard, then you have indoor seating, you have outdoor seating, and then you have a regular sit-down restaurant standard. So possibly seeing what other communities do and look at maybe standardizing that. Um, that, that's just an idea of some of what we want to take on. As far as how, how we're going to get there, um, the work program will be really finalized by the consultant, but we do know for now that um, the council and the planning commission has formed what's called the ENZO Joint Committee. So it's three members of our planning commission and two members of our city council. So as we start to take on the issues, we'll work through them with them 
in, as you know, on public workshops, will come to the boards as necessary, following up with, with planning commission and ultimately end up with this document um, approval at city council. We have about a two and a half year process to do it on. We hope to have it done by December, two, that's when we'll budget it till, December of 2016. So, um, you know, it's, it's gonna be challenging to get through a lot of these issues and try and make those timelines. But um, input from people such as, you know, the design review boards is critical because you all work very closely with the zoning ordinance and our standards and you see it in the review of projects. So your input is, it, throughout the whole process would be you know, greatly appreciated. So just as we have all these ideas of what we want to do, it's also really important at this time to define what we don't think this effort, what, it, what it's not. Um, when we did the general plan, it kept growing and growing. You know, you start off with goals of one thing and then it, it gets to be a larger project. And because of the budget especially, and the time, um, we need to try and try and contain as possible this effort. So those of you that are very familiar with um, the zoning code tw chapter tw title 20, <clears throat> we have a lot of other zoning sections in there or programs. For example, the inclusionary, the TEDR ordinance, the AUD ordinance that just got approved, the growth management program. And there's a long list of the condo conversion ordinance that we will not be taking on as a part of this ENZO effort. Not that it can't be taken on in the future or that those issues won't be identified now and we'll put them on a list to be looked at later. But we really do have to try and keep on track to updating and streamlining the zoning ordinance where we can and to take on any one of those individual. And they're on page, sorry, page three of this document that says Enzo on top. Under number five, there's a long list of, and we have gone over this list with the decision makers and planning commission and the, the Enzo Joint Committee as to that we, will, we are not planning on taking on any of these as part of the Enzo effort. As far as how the community is gonna be um, kept informed, we have developed a website and it's um, www.santabarbaraca.gov forward slash Enzo. We would like anyone interested in being kept informed of this effort to sign up on the website that's where we will keep our mailing list. And we, there's also an ability to go onto the website and provide comments. There's a section to provide your comments. So we really encourage any of you or any of your coworkers or clients um, to, to use the website to sign up or to provide comments. We also gave you that little half sheet for people that um, don't use a computer or prefer not to use a computer. They can provide it in written form, turn it into our planning counter, or mail it in. That information's on that half sheet. Um, the website already has some basic information for property owners or um, developers. It has the zoning ordinance in there, the zoning map, <clears throat> basic uses permitted handout, and a link to Planning Central, which is where we keep all our zoning related handouts. So if anyone wanted to start perusing the website, they could do that. Um, again, Danny and I are um, spearheading this effort, and we welcome any comments. So far, we've been to, who have we been to? Um, Citizen Planning Association. We went to the AIA, um, the Board of Realtors, um, the Neighborhood Advisory Council, and um, a group of land use consultants that we met with yesterday, and we've gotten some some good feedback so far. Some of the feedback we're getting a lot is in line with stuff already on this long list, but we are getting you know other comments that, that we will be incorporating into this list. So that's kind of just the overview. And again, it's our opportunity to um, ask any initial feedback or if you could change anything in the ordinance other than that long list of what we're not <laughs> taking on, you know, now's the time or, or provided via the um, website or that sheet okay. no question so I can see that if we really scrutinize the zoning ordinance as it stands and we start tinkering and tampering with it and, and so forth, that I, I just know that some people are going to start going into this AUD thing but you have said that the AUD is not a part of this update what do you do with the encroachments of this you know exercise of uh, soliciting 
input from all these people that does impinge on the AUD at this time. What do you do with that? Well, for now, I mean, as you all know, the AUD was recently adopted, and we're still finalizing some details of the review. Um, and it's an experimental project for eight years. So we really, we are not planning on going into the changing density requirements. Um, that there could be possible changes to, and I, and I don't know that that'll happen, but let's say that someone wants to tweak setbacks to the R3 and R4, which is multifamily zoning. Well, that is something that we may look at, but we're, when we're talking about the AUD, we're really not gonna get into changing the, the densities allowed in various neighborhoods. So how long do you think this process will take? Well, our goal is the fall or December of 2016. Again, to, to, to take the ENZO to, to council. But it's, it's really the first phase of a process. Because once we do the, I mean, there's going to be follow-up. There's going to be ordinances. Things are going to be identified, for example, in the coastal zone. And as you know, those will have to go forward and get certified by the Coastal Commission. There might be other things that come up through the process that we may not take on now, but they might be phase two or phase three. But, but the initial restructuring of the, of the document, streamlining where we can, updating the definitions, the uses, setbacks possibly, we hope that'll be done in the next couple of years. But it will be adopted like uh, five years from now, the well, soonest? No, we hope that the, 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 the reformatted oh. structure and this initial effort will be adopted by 2016, the end of 2016. It seemed to me like every time the city go through a process like this, the idea always to streamline the process, but at the end of the day, it's always more difficult. <laughs> <laughs> more difficult for everything. So what's your opinion on that? I agree. And I hope that, <laughs> and I hope that we, can, we can try and simplify. I mean, we've, we've been hearing from the community that, um, that we need to kind of go backwards in time and where things may have been simpler. Are so, there already items on the table to move from discretionary to administrative review? And if so, what, what are those items? We, ha we have, we've been hearing that from the, the different organizations, and I think that's part of our goal, but okay. we haven't identified exactly which okay. items yet. And I don't know if you want to add to that. What I wanted to, uh, to address was your comment about things getting more difficult, right? And more complicated. <clears throat> the reason that this happens, in my opinion anyway, is because when we do an ordinance amendment, we try to address every single possible scenario that we can think of. Oh, what should setbacks be if you have a parking space here? What should setbacks be if you have a chimney here? You know, it's like, so it's like da 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 da. You do 10 different scenarios of what the setbacks would be for 10 different things, right? And then, so then that makes everything more complicated. And then the very next day, you think, oh, we should have added this, we should have had 11, we should have had 15 different scenarios. You can never think of all the scenarios. And what we've, what my opinion is we've done over time is we've, we've tried to decrease the gray area more and more by saying, by addressing all these different scenarios, right? And that just makes it more difficult and, and it's never satisfactory because we can never think of all the scenarios that are out there. So what, what I'm hoping to do in the, in the simplification process is to change the way that we think about the ordinance and instead of trying to come up with ordinance language for every scenario we can think of, come up with to use this, this administrative process instead, right? Because how many times have we said, yeah, we know it when we see it, but how do you describe this thing? Right, so what I, what I would like to do is, is just to conquer the gray area by, by getting staff to have some more administrative authority, or maybe the design boards, or maybe the staff hearing officer, so that, so that you don't have to describe everything in detail in order to say it's allowed or not. You, know, you, can, you can pay a small fee, like, like has been implemented for the fences and hedge ordinance, and give a, give a range of things. Okay, well, if it's someplace in this range, and you can make certain findings, then you can approve it. So, so instead of just, instead of identifying, trying to identify everything and making it complicated, I hope to simplify it just by saying, look, these are some basic standards and here's some leeway that you can have. You can have 10% or 15% of setback space. You can have variable setbacks. You can do, you know, there's a, a bunch of different tools out there that we don't have in our arsenal right now, right? You just kind of go, oh, you need a modification, $1,400 in six weeks, please, you know? Which, so, so we're trying to get away from that 
by going kind of a different paradigm for the for the ordinance. So that's the hope. Yeah, I guess one of my concern is that I'm, I'm not sure the process will help the design process or impede it on the design, the creative process. Because of the issue is that, you know, I mean, as you know, a lot of, in my opinion, a lot of great buildings were built in the 20s, the 30s, and 40s. By the time you have all the zoning ordinance and all the restriction and black and white, then you pretty much rule out, you pretty much kind of impeded the, the, the creative design process. And then, um, so that's why I'm, my question is, uh, every time you update something, you make it more difficult for design profession to come up with something creative. And that's really the balance of, are you helping or are you hurting the process? Yeah, I mean, I, I hear that. There's, there is going to be a balance, right? I mean, the city uh, and the residents of the city are used to a certain um, standard, I guess. And our, our hope is to not change that development standard. It's not going to really change your process at all, you know? There's, because what we do in zoning is parallel to what, what the design boards do to, to figure out design. We're hoping to make things just easier from a, from, from a zoning process so you don't have to figure out all these rules. There'll still be, I, I, I hope it makes it actually easier for everybody to come through this, come through our process. That's our, that's our, that's our goal. It's just like the uh, the Lobero, Lobero Theater. I don't think it can, can ever be built today. It was complied to today's zoning standards. Well, and, uh, pretty well, relaxed. I just haven't seen a building like that in the last many years, 20, 30 years, and now with the new new ordinance, new zoning, mostly new because of parking. Actually, you know, yeah. I think parking drives everything, which is why parking is going to be one of the controversial items. So, so, so I guess my be honest comment I have is that how would you go through the process? I feel at the end of, of the day, you know, I mean, I think that the, the, the design review board, the city had the ABR and then the, the historical landmark and the residential. I think those boards should have some certain freedom to look at every project and judge on the merit of each project instead of we had to go through the checklist of A, B, C, D, E, F, and then there's nothing left. I hear what you're saying. Well, we, it's, our, it's our goal as well. I have a comment Oops. about modifications. Sorry. Excuse Excuse me. Me. Um, yeah. Kirk, and then you. Well, I'm just going to say to that point that um, one of the first things I wrote down when um, we sat down was uh, to have an ordinance that's searchable. <clears throat> uh, was to have an ordinance that is a piece of software that's easily searchable. And, and not only just for like words, mm -hmm. but you could say, for example, enter, you know, um, R3, uh, multi-story, multi-family dwelling or something like that, and get highlighted all the sections of the ordinance that pertain, at least as far as the computer could assess. Mm -hmm. I think just for that, that would, as a design professional, that would simplify my job greatly. And, and, and even mm -hmm. if there's complexity built in, mm -hmm. at least I know what I'm dealing with. So I, you know, a number of times, for example, I've gone both to the, I've done my own research and then gone to the counter and talked mm -hmm. to someone at the counter and then find out three months later that we both missed something that's mm -hmm. gonna affect the design, right? right? And how you go to explain that to the, to the, your client, mm -hmm. right? Well, right. I missed it. Mm -hmm. So, you know, I've spent thousands of dollars on this design and now i got to change it because right. you, mm -hmm. you missed it. Or was it the city's fault or was it your fault, you know? Mm -hmm. um, so to me, to, having, having a document that, that aids you in finding the information that's relevant to your project, mm -hmm. I know that's, that's maybe not even something that's being mentioned here or considered here, but to me that would be really valuable. Mm -hmm change. That's part of the reorganization that we hope for. There's a couple of different philosophies uh, on, on how to do this, right? One is the way we have it right now. You have major areas like the parking ordinance. So anytime you want to think about parking, you go to the parking ordinance. And then you have the, the different zone categories, right? So you look at that. Then you have general provisions that apply to the whole, you know, to all zones. Then you have definitions. And so, and I believe it's done that way so you don't have to keep repeating everything. There's another, there's another possible way, and there, there's probably a whole bunch of other ways, but another way that I can think of is you put everything that pertains to a particular development, like in the R3 zone, you want to build something, here's, here's the density, here's the height, here's the parking, here's the process, you know? And so that's, that's another way to, that we could, that's potential. The problem is that is every time 
you know, the parking could be repeated many, many times. If you have to repeat the parking for every single zone category, mm -hmm. it's kind of a drag. Mm -hmm. So, um, and then updating and what have you. So, but I, but, but we're definitely thinking about the organization of it. We don't know what's best. That's why we're, we're hoping to employ a <coughs> consultant who's done this a lot in the last few years. And hopefully there's a best practices sort of model that we can, that we can just say, oh, that looks great. Let's start with that and then let's modify it to, to, be, to be, you know, for us, the city of Santa Barbara. The next item's at four o'clock, so we have lots of time for lots okay. of questions. Uh, Scott's <laughs> next and then we'll go to a few questions. One, just an area that we found problematic is when a site has two zoning designations. There's always a lot of gray area about which setbacks apply and how you, how you do that. Uh, which leads to a lot of confusion during development. Okay. And, uh, oh, go ahead. Keep going. Keep going. And secondly, uh, just the nature of modifications. It depend, really depends on who you talk to, whether mods are no big deal or absolutely no mods on a project. And that varies by commissioners on the different boards. Some are, it's almost like a political test, it's staunchly anti-mod. Mm -hmm. Some are much more permissible. If there was some language in the code that got to the nature of modifications, what Types of mods are, mm -hmm. are, are, are mm -hmm. approvable. And I know on this board, we look at mods and we make recommendations to planning commission. And sometimes <laughs> the notion mm -hmm. is this is a much better project because of this mod, because mm -hmm. of this unique situation. Right. And and on the planning commission, there may be someone, for example, who says absolutely no mods. I want to prove it. And maybe they're running for city council in a year. Who knows? But uh, it just it, it's just such a the Wild West out there. As a designer, you just don't have any idea whether you're you're running up a dead end with the modification or not. <coughs> yeah, write that down. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's a great comment. I I don't know whether we're I don't yeah. know that we're going to be able to get to that because it's the discretionary process, right? It will always depend on who's who's the decision maker or decision makers and what the makeup of that body is. You know, so. Um, and, you know, standards change over time, right? The community standard changes over time. So what may have been acceptable 20 years ago may not be acceptable now or vice versa, right? So um, the sort of the beauty of the modification process, though, is it's pretty loose in, as far as the findings you need to make. It, it's an appropriate, you know, it's, an, it's necessary to, to, uh, to allow an appropriate improvement. That's, that gives pretty wide latitude to someone that's, mm -hmm. that's making the that's making the decision, and for good for good purpose, you know, because you have a public hearing, you want to get all the information and make a good decision based on the facts on the in the particular case. My thought about the administrative process that that I hope to have is it's going to be much more limited. I don't know how familiar you are with the fence and height uh, fence and hedge ordinance that was just approved, but it sets forth some pretty strict um, boundaries within within which the staff could work and then some findings that you'd have to make in order to be able to approve those right and so it's it's much more um regulated not regulated but uh, it's it's prescribed. much more prescribed because there's no public hearing right we're kind of making this based on less information and less public hearing the more the more public process right the the easier it is and then the next step would be a staff hearing officer modification and then you know, planning commission with seven people, you get, you get, you really get a different, a better, you get the benefit of more minds thinking about it, right? Howard, I want to go but to you, but through, I want to just add, sorry, oh. but hopefully through this process, we hope to eliminate some of the frequently requested modifications mm -hmm. and put more also in the ordinance and the intent of certain things. So mm -hmm. that would be helpful. That's the hope. He was just talking about hedges and then we'll go to you. Um, i not familiar because I haven't tried to push one through, but I did get some negative noise from, from a planner outside mm -hmm. about how difficult it was about, he's like trying to get a hedge. Have, have any of them gotten approved so far and what's been the process? There's been a, there's been a few. I have probably five sitting on my desk that, that, we're, that we're looking, that we're going through at this point. Okay. It's, um, the process is you, you give us a plan, you give us, you know, there's some similar requirements and um, you have to show that it's compatible. If it's a hedge, you have to show that it's compatible with other hedges in your neighborhood, and they just have to be um, existing, right? 
And for fences, you have to show compatibility by showing that there are other fences that are legal or non-conforming. So it's a little bit of a higher standard. And we're still trying to work through some of these, some of these details, issues, because because we're looking at the language and kind of going, what do we mean by that? What, you know, what exactly? But it's, um, but and we've had a, we, oh, and if it's an interior hedge, yeah, then you need your neighbor's approval. And is it like tenure for a professor? If you apply and you don't get it, you have to take on your hedge? No, 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 no. <laughs> Actually, it's, it, if you don't, if you apply and you don't get it, then, well, basically, you'll be hearing more about this at council on July 2nd, but I think, I think the way we're going is that, or at least the direction council has given us, is they don't want enforcement unless somebody complains. Mm -hmm. So, so I think the way we're going is, regardless of whether if you applied for it and you don't get it, we're not going to make you take it down. It just means that at some point in the future, if somebody complains, we can look in the records and say, "Eh, they applied, but we didn't get it." So at that point, they would have to do something. Okay. That's what we're thinking. How would your uh, did I hear you say that that this was also going to be looked at by you're going to present to the planning commission? Is that one of the groups that you're? Yeah, we've already been to the planning commission already. initially. Okay. They've seen the draft scope of work, and okay. we've been to the that joint committee right. of the planning commission right. and city council. Okay. My other question was, you know, it was maybe I don't know how many years ago, clients would come to the architect and say, you know, uh, we want to do this. Tell us what we can do here, and because the architect had been was a so-called experienced the architect would say well i you know you, you can do this and this, and this but mm -hmm. uh there may be we mean to this is discretionary and so we should probably talk to a planner mm -hmm. so now client says what can we do it's either i i really don't know we really have i'd like to talk to a planner <laughs> so you go to the planning desk and say if i have a question here's a parcel uh you know my client owns this parcel so where they look it up on the computer and, so, and you want to do some things and say you know we really can't the planner says, uh, I really can't answer your question, you know, over, over the counter. I, I can recommend one of two ways. One is to pull it in, uh, you know, give us the information, what you want to do, and we'll research it, and it's three hours and minimum fee and so forth. Mm -hmm. Is that because it's so complicated now that that's the way it is? And when we do this zoning, this new zoning ordinance, that won't be necessary? Or is that the way you think things will be tending to have to formalize the feasibility studies for every, every you know, piece of mm -hmm. effort development? That's going to happen a lot with old property. Well, the hope is that you won't have to do, you won't have to have a planner consultation, that the rules are, are clear enough, right? But the problem is this is an old city, right? I mean, there's a lot of stuff from a long time ago, and rules have changed over time. And sometimes it's not clear what you're allowed to do because of non-conforming rules or how much parking did you provide versus how much do you need for your new use and, and those type of things. I can't, I can't guarantee that you won't have to do a planner consultation, but, but the idea is that, that it would be pretty clear about what you can do. And then, you know, if you, and then there's going to be this gray area that we're hoping to get administrative approval on, right? That's, that's going to be an area where it's not going to be written down except the findings but you know in the beginning i think that'll be a little tough to figure out what where the boundaries are exactly of what the staff would approve but over time you know as we get more experience with it i think it become i think it would become more clear for more people that's the idea and intent that's the yeah. idea that's the hope that's our goal mm -hmm. makes sense makes sense to me thank you i have another question uh so i noticed that um Illegal dwelling units are in the list of not to be considered. Uh, does that include secondary dwelling? The whole issue about secondary dwellings, or is that? Yeah, um, the secondary dwelling units came up a lot during the general plan update, and it, it's kind of split. Some people really support them, some people don't want them in their neighborhoods. So we made a commitment at that time that we wouldn't take on secondary dwelling units until we took them on neighborhood by neighborhood. Mm -hmm. So. For now, I mean, we are going to remove them out of the CUP section because state law doesn't require a conditional use permit. But we're not going to take on changing all the standards yet until we're ready to take them on neighborhood. So that is not part of this. The Correct. Okay. I'd like to follow up on that. You guys made a commitment. What do you mean by that? Well, we discussed it as part of the general plan. We said that we would take it on neighborhood by neighborhood. So what is a timeline? What is it for the public that's listening? What is that anticipation of when that's going to be dealt with? Uh, we don't have that work program yet. 
what does it take to get it on your agenda or on your radar so it's something that's pending within the next six months, nine months, or two years? Five years, eight years. <laughs> okay, so just to, just to be like completely honest about this, I, I can't imagine that would happen before the end of this process in the end of 2016. Because we already have, a, I mean, there's a there's a, a ton of resources just put towards this effort, and I I mean, I don't believe that there's there's been a big um, call to action out in the community for this, and I think it would take that sort of a, a pretty a pretty radical call to action before before that got put on our work program. Well, and it that's would be initiated my, by council. That's my opinion. Okay. I have a question. You said, you, I said, we're looking at other communities that have more modern standards. I was wondering if, if you knew off the top of your heads which ones you were looking at. <laughs> <laughs> well, no, we know other, I don't know that they're more modern or, standards. Or streamlined but know, or something. I know well, other communities that are doing it. Um, okay. And they all vary in the updates they're doing, but I know that um, the city of Santa Monica is currently under undergoing their their zoning ordinance update. Um, there's been like the city of Palo Alto. Um, Madera, right? Madera. There, uh, there's a long list. Um, Pasadena. Goleta. Goleta's undergoing right now. The county just read. The county just did theirs a couple of years ago, and most of it's still on hiatus with the Coastal Commission. But. But we've been told that that's quite a good model to look at, you know, as Which far as one? the county of Santa Barbara. Mm. So like. there's. Mm. Go ahead, Scott. Okay. Um, dirty word, creeks. Uh, in the code, uh, the requirement for a creek setback is, I think, 25 feet. Routinely, we're creek, asked yeah. to provide 50, 75 feet. Is that going to be addressed somewhere in this? Um, no. no, I mean not not part of this, but there are discussions going on, you know, to to figure some of this stuff out. There's there that's more of an environmental, okay, uh, um, environmental and resource issue than it is a strict zoning issue. So it's under the management of planning, so to speak, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. So and a few years ago, you know, yeah. we tried to do the the creek setback standards and put time and resource into, it, and then it it all got put on okay. hold. But okay. we're not we're not taking it on as part of this. Okay, it just seems like it's again the wild west. It's all over the map. And, yeah, yeah. And also, just there will be other, not necessarily creeks, but there will be other zoning amendments or zoning standards that could be happening independent of this. I know that we're um, going to be going soon on the emergency um, shelter ordinance. So there's other amendments that might happen mm -hmm. concurrently or okay. around the same time. So if uh, the public is listening, um, wanted to know what issues are going to, are part of the work scope for this update, mm -hmm. they could just contact, they have to come down to the city to find out. They could go to the website. Go oh, to the website. All of our documents are on the website. Okay. Um, they could certainly call me. Okay. Um, but the website has, um, I think it's called resource documents um, and, included. And, okay. And if there's uh, items that are not included in the scope that that the public feels you get starting getting some response from the public, they would like to see those things considered. Then possibly they could get shifted into the scope of work or not. Is that something that can happen? And how would that happen? Well, it depends what they are. If there's something not even related to, to what's on the scope, mm -hmm. they may go on a list for a future update. Okay. Um, and if there's something that is already similar to this. I mean, because this is a working list. Mm -hmm. You know, things could change as we hear from the public. You know, we're going to go to workshops. Okay. Things could change. But if it's something very different, it may just have to go on a list and we, we won't be able to take it on. Okay. But there is a comment section on the website where they could provide those types of comments. Okay. Thank you. So we have these, yes, yeah, to, just to follow up, we have these kind of gen large topics, right? Parking is a large topic. And so if someone says, hey, we, we want to do, we think we should do this to parking, we would consider it as part of what we're doing, whether it ends up going forward or not or being discussed, it's hard to say. But, but it's part of what we're talking about. Someone says, oh, we should do this with non-conforming buildings, you know, we would, we would certainly look into that kind of stuff. But if someone says, we should have a transfer of development rights program, you know, for residential density, like, no, that we're not going to do that, you know. Mm -hmm. So it just depends on exactly what it is. Mm -hmm. But we welcome all comments for those of you who are 
out in, out in the public. And, you know, they'll, they'll go on a list, whether they get addressed in this effort or in a future effort. That, that's, uh, that I can't say. Great. Anything else from anybody? So how are you picking um, the um, consulting firm? Well, we're gonna, we hope to send an RFP, a request for proposal, by um, the end of this month. And then we hope to have a contract. We'll have a selection committee. Mm -hmm. And we hope to have a contract in September mm -hmm. and get them started right away. And their first effort will be the initial, just trying to restructure and give us recommendations on, on Im initial improvements. And, and I'm not sure if that quite answered your question, how we're going to do it. You know, we'll see the proposals that we get, mm -hmm. who they are, what they've done, if they like what we, if we like what they've done, okay. you know, and if we like Experience. whoever, whoever, whoever has the best proposal for the amount of money that we have, you know, we're going to go with that. We're going to go with that group. Less, less is more. Agreed. <laughs> What's the cutoff date for our input? I think I missed that. Probably um, end of next week, because then... Oh, really? Well, well for, no, no, that's just for this initial list. We're going to want your input throughout this whole process. I see. We imagine that the whole, like, the really getting into the working, you know, on the, on the issues is going to start in January of next year. So next year will be the substantial. public substantial process, right? right. But well, any initial input based on this list would yeah. be... What this what this document is, it's gonna it's gonna be incorporated into the request for proposals for the consultants, just so they they can say, oh well, this is what the city wants us to do, so we know what to bid. So we're trying to yeah, so we're going out early to get everybody's as many people as we can initial thoughts on, is this is this list good? Should it be bigger? You know, are there other things we haven't thought of? And so and then we're increasing, you know, we're adding some appropriate things onto the scope. And then that will go out to the consultant, and then off to the races. Wonderful. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. That was item one, and I was just told that for item three, which is 101 North Milpas, we can't hear that project until 4.05, which is 15 minutes before the scheduled time, um, even though you're here early, and we thank you. Um, are, is the applicant for number two available? The no, the the item at uh, 1600 block of De La Vina, item number two, has been postponed two weeks at the applicant's request. So that's why we can take item three, 101 North Milpas, we can hear that as early as 15 minutes prior to the agendized time. So at 4.05, we can uh, start that item. Okay, so I'm just going to call a 15-minute break, and we'll see everyone at 4.05. From a breeze is blown. To and fro on the Broadway Road to love. Still, I'll always, always keep the memory of sure. the way. I'm going to reopen today, today being June 9th. The ADR, we are on item 2. We're 15 minutes early. We had a project drop off. Uh, I'm sorry, item 3. Item 3, 101 North Milford Street. That was my fault. <laughs> Item 3, 101 North Milpa Street. It is June 9th, ABR. Thanks. The plan's out. I'm going to have you introduce <coughs> yourself and then have Kirk read the minutes of the previous meeting. Kilsmeyer with Wells Fargo Bank. Rob, Rob Jackowitz. Great. The um, board uh, reviewed the project um, last month on the 27th, and the motion was continued to two weeks for two weeks. Uh, number one, to restudy for a more toned down yellow color for the ATM machines with plaster instead of the proposed metal. Number two, and I don't think these uh, minutes have been reviewed. So we didn't get a chance to edit them or ratify them. But ratify anyway, okay. it might be a little rough. Number two, integrate the proposed lighting fixtures into the proposed architectural style. 
Number three, restudy to add more character details, possibly Hispanic motif to the proposed handrail. Number four, study to remove, to remove the proposed redundant ATM overhangs. Number five, study opportunities for additional landscaping at the tall wall along Haley Street. Number six, add more planting details and callouts on the plans. Number seven, consider adding a shade canopy tree on the south side parking lot. A 5 0 vote. Great. So, let's have your presentation okay. go through. I wrote them down in a different order, but. Um, you can go by your list. Okay. We talked about uh, toning down the tone on tone, which was the yellow. As Paul explained before, it's a Wells Fargo standard, is that particular yellow. So, what we did in this case is we, we can't deviate from that. So, once again, we talk about here the three ATMs, or the two ATMs in the night depository. We have modified that, that these will be the ATMs, and then there will be plaster uh, fill-ins around there, and then the paint, uh, we're going to paint that. So let's see that in elevation. Sure. Have the next page. And here it is now. So it's still the same layout, the two ATMs, and we had to go with the same plaster to match the building and paint it to match. Okay. Okay. And if Next you want to just jump, we can just jump to the canopy. Sure, Got of course, there, the canopy no longer exists. Okay. Okay. Uh, the next comment I had written down was consider revising the narrow planter, which was the landscape uh, comment in the front. We were able to squeeze a few more inches. That is now a 20-inch width uh, planter oh, in, wow. the, in the front. Uh, it's all the way on the first page. So it is very hard to read. Uh, the note says 20 inches. So I believe we had 12... Okay, planting inches. Now we have 16 planting inches. See a wall that's two inches thick? Two inch thick? wall? No, I, let's see here. There's something. He was able to squeeze a few more, total of four more inches into that planter. I believe it was only, wasn't it only? Six or nine to begin with? Or? Yeah. Masonry wall. So the thickness of the CMU is at least six. Plus zero That's zero. a four inch CM. Four inch. Yeah, yeah. This thing's only you know, a foot tall. Right, so yeah. it's 12 inches of width. Yes, because, uh, you know, you're right. It was only, I think, eight before. Mm -hmm. And you had said it would work. We, we were able to increase that depth a little bit to give a little more planting space. What's but you've kept to the original, sorry. Oh, yeah. um, raised planter design in lieu, oh, yeah. of, in lieu of making yeah. it flush with and the sidewalk. Yes. I want to go to that elevation sheet so we can see what it looks yeah, like. Yeah, it's this planter here. Can you hear the side? No. Yeah, there's very little to it. Let's see this. What's the width of that? Of this material. That has not changed. Again, El Dorado veneer. Right. That's it. Sorry, this all comes as one page out sure. of their spec book, but that's the material. This, this hasn't changed. This is what's already out there on the corner. I don't know if you've noticed that. This, this sandstone stuff yeah. is there? Yeah, it's, it's, it's a very old version of it, so we're trying to match it as closely as possible. W which portion is to remain that you're trying to match? Oh, only, only this part out oh. here. Yeah. Do you have a photograph of that? You can see what the condition is. Was that part of your original submittal? Uh, yes, there were. Because then the question I was like, oh, how are you finishing okay. the top? Right. Thank you. And if it was the four inch brick plus the veneer on top of that, the dirt, four inch brick. I can see it very well in there. Where can they want to do sandstone? Yeah. It's an imitation. It's veneer. Yeah, concrete. Is there some sort of precast? Yeah, it is a veneer on top. It's on page A2.1. This is very small. It looks like that's what you're planning on doing for the 20 inches. Yeah. And one person made the option, uh, could we do something like that or even cut it off here so, and then make this flush with the sidewalk? Because the, the goal is just to make sure we have enough room for all the dirt and stuff. 
and, and if you've done the math and it works, then that's fine. Well, we, we widened it. I think you said it would work before. I we did. were able to, okay. to add more inches. I had no issue with it previously. It's a better solution to do an L shape. Yeah. You're saying the curb can, can occur underneath the yeah, ramp no, as a support, and thereby re re eliminating the interior curb. That's it's that's. I mean, this could be the It's adjacent the to the ramp. Get rid of that. Do you see on your plan how you have it indicated? Well, here, if if this is a, a four-inch CMU, is that what you're saying? They're both four-inch CMU. Mm -hmm. This is going to have two-inch veneer on it, at least two inches. Even if the material is only one inch, you need mortar. Mortar. Mm -hmm. And it's on both sides, so that's five and five. So that means you're going to have ten inches of planning. And we need a cap piece on there too. There is a cap. Yeah. yeah, and you need some kind of finish on the inside as well, which you cut the cap should cover. So you're going to have less than 10 inches of planting. But technically, you do an L-shaped planter. You don't even need um, the wall on the inside. You can use the wall of the steps to be uh, yeah. the planting wall the, and uh, just the, plant it out. It, it really the curb underneath, completely underneath the, the ramp. Walls. Do you understand? No, it's, I, I understand. Okay. I guess we... we Save some money, look better. You look better. How about we, before we discuss this, let's just move on, if you don't mind. <laughs> you just had that. Integrate the building lighting, site lighting across the site plan, the elevation plan, floor plan. What we did here is we did change the fixture to a more architectural looking fixture. It is noted, uh, you'll see it on the next page here. It is obviously more details. This is it now. This oh. is an LED fixture. Okay. Um, Paul's holding up. Is, is right here. Yeah, that's it, right there. Oh, he was holding up that spectre. As far oh. as you had commented too about there was a uh, light attached to the building up, up front. We removed those. This is like a little guy right there. Yeah, exactly. This particular building has this canopy that goes around here. It has existing recessed can lights in there. We're going to replace those can lights. They're all incandescent ones now with LED ones. Okay. They're already there, so we're like, why are we going to, you know, it, it was hard to find a fixture. This is, as you know, is not the nicest building around. It was kind of hard to find something that would match this particular building. Went back out and studied it. These fixtures already exist. Okay. Electrician confirmed that they can be... Yeah, reuse them. Reuse them. And, uh, okay. and they will all now be LEDs. So our next comment was revised... Or not, our comment, your comment. Revise the handrail along Milpas to add character and intrigue. And in fact, it shows up here. Here it is. Here's the different details here. Uh, it's easiest to see in the elevation view. It shows up. It mm -hmm. is a uh, metal railing painted black. And it does show up here in front. And it comes around the side here because this is our accessory entrance as well. So. And all the cut sheets are in the, in the package yes. as well. Okay, great. Mm -hmm. Revise the trash enclosure door to include wood and provide details of the doors. If you flip back to page A2.1. Right here. Yeah. yeah. And then there's further details here. Do you know if the frame is on the ins uh, visible or... I mean, it appears like the frame is in front of the wood. Mm -hmm. Here it is. Okay. Gotcha. Thank you. Okay. Uh, add details regarding doors and windows to be replaced. He did do that here on this page here. He is showing here that these doors, or uh, these window frames are to be replaced here, here, right here, here. Right here. So the black anodized as opposed to the correct. We anodized. we do both uh, in in our buildings depending on what okay. a lot of some of our interiors that if we were to use a banded barrier, we would have anodized uh, silver here. But yes, we, we would be using them okay. because that's matching existing. But we're going to replace all four sides, do the whole thing, and get our energy efficiently building with the dual glazed. Mm -hmm. 
Okay. Single glazing. Either one. Those are the items that, that I had taken. Let's touch base on the landscape plan just because that was. Oh, yeah. how can I forget that? Absolutely. Uh, the landscape plan asked for. Um, a tree somewhere? It asked the trees uh, be replaced in the back, and the shade trees have been put back here to provide parking lot shading. Additionally, the second landscape comment was the taller area. This was per, the, the previous vault when this was originally built as a bank. Tower, actually. The tower. So we added uh, more vertical shrubbery right there. Which you'll see that. And in you'll the, see it on the elevations the as well. Mm -hmm. Here you go. Oh, wow. Okay. And and then generic details and the water. Okay. Good. Anything else you want to do for your presentation? Uh, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. What I will do is open up public comment. Is there any, anyone from the public wishing to address the board? Seeing no one come forward, I will ask are there any letters? No? No, All Mr. Right. Chair. I'll return it back to the board for questions of the applicant in any particular order. Question. Am I allowed to ask questions? Yes, you may. Thank you. So um, this uh, trash enclosure. Yes, sir. Note two. Steel frame wood doors painted. See detail. <laughs> so uh, I was wondering, is this trash enclosure gate for, so these, this is fiber wood grained textured panel. Is that a, a solid sheet, or is it in panels, or what, what are we looking at? What actually are we seeing here? It's a hardy board is what he's proposing there, hardy cement fiber wood grained panel, and then it's cut. In Large a, sheet, cut yeah, the size, I see. Cut okay. the size. And so these elements that frame that are, are what material? Metal. Are? They are metal, metal. and... Um, oh, sorry, sorry, right? It is all metal enclosure, steel framed. It looks like he has a quarter inch so, continuous steel frame welded and painted. So he's building a with an angle iron or a C channel. Two by six resawn trim. And then it's in a metal frame. Mm. We just detail thirty on sheet A, what? Second sheet. Two point one. Two point one. It's a little hard to read. So it looks like there's a hardy board panel, a wood frame on top of it, and a steel frame behind it. Is that what's happening? It looks like. So what is the concern? Are you just asking questions? Well, I, I'm, I'm just asking questions at the moment. Okay, then let's move on. So, uh, but to get the answer, is, is it, is, it looks like there's a U channel that's steel, mm -hmm. in which there is a hardy panel behind it, and then two by six. Is it resawn? Resawn wood. Yes. So metal right. wood and hardy plan, hardy panel. Okay. Right. Okay. Okay. Questions okay. from anybody else? Yeah. <clears throat> question. Yes. I, I guess I just have a question about the plant in front. Um, I think that um, it'd probably be a, how do you feel about just getting rid of all the blocks, uh, just plant it uh, flush with the sidewalk, and um, because the steps are only like what, a foot higher than the sidewalk. I'm sure that you have three steps, a foot and a half max, and uh, simplify it, plant it out, then we would have a 20 inches of planter instead of having 10. So just, oh, I'm sorry. Okay. Um, it, it, he's just asking a question. You know, have you ever maintained? What's the color of this concrete? Is this generic gray? I mean, the standard gray concrete, or are you planning on doing a colored concrete? Just a standard gray. Okay, and it's 30, 36 inches wide. No, 48. Okay. Mm. Just leave it open as, a, as mm -hmm. just a thought. Just, just a question. Questions from somebody else? There's a couple, uh, Mr. Chair. Yes. Um, there's a couple of uh, 
nice little uh, clay tile. Uh, looks like overflow scuppers coming out the, that tall wall. Just wanted to make sure those are going to remain. Yes. Those noted to remain somewhere. Okay. Yeah. All right. Where's keeping those shrubs along there? Or not? Can you actually ask the question louder? And well, I'm the just yeah. There's a couple of existing shrubs along that tall wall. I'm just wondering if it's those are worth. Oh, it's they're keeping noted or? to be safe. Yeah. Oh, they are. Yeah. Okay. Oh, okay. It is. Well, let me see it The designation of that Here's circle, the... it becomes a solid. As you notice, what he does is he, he notes the dashed. Can't see why you're pointing. They're right here. Right here. Yeah, they're noted because the circles get smaller because there's no they for some reason, but they are right there. It's the symbol the with a circle the and a small cross in the center. Yes. Is an existing shrub to yes. remain. Oh. You sure? Third one down. Uh, the existing trees I see are noted to remain, but I don't see anything listed under the shrub palette that says there's any shrubs to remain. Shrubs. Is there anything in the existing shrubs? Existing shrubs can't be to remain. Is well, we could we can add that note. We can ask that note to be added. Yeah, I mean, at this level, we don't need necessarily the level of detail, but like it's hard to tell from this photo whether it's anything worth keeping. Okay. People walk this direction? No, that's the demo plan, isn't it? That's from yes. the proposed plan. Oops. Yeah, that's the proposed plan. Oops. So, so, so is this a ramp going up to this level? Yes. And there would be a step right here? No. This is flush, so that grade-wise? That is, yeah. Okay. So then this planter right here is just going to be the edge of the concrete that comes down and you have a concrete curb here and then so that's dirt basically flush Correct. with the curb. Okay. That's your handrail. And then the handrails on both sides because that's code requirement with the extension is necessary. Okay. And so this is basically flush or it'll be a six inch drop up I mean step up and then this is your bike path parking. These two things forty five? Yeah, oh yeah, those are your bike that was a staff you know bike bicycle. Okay. Um, so let's go to comments. And if you don't mind, I'll just jump into the thing. See how this solution is? Because this is a ramp going up, so this concrete will be a little bit higher than this dirt or somehow. We actually could do the same here and simplify this a little bit and just let this be the exposed concrete here and then just, if we have plants here, fill that up. Absolutely. And, and it's just because of the finished detail of having the, mm -hmm. the cut stone, your, your um, orange block and then a top on the top and then if you have not enough dirt then it's kind of either have enough or don't have enough I and mean, I'm glad you found the four the extra four inches but it was a comment that people are you know concerned with this is an existing piece of concrete with the stone veneer that's to remain so we're not altering that at all or if we do you can just continue that stone veneer all the way as necessary Does that sound reasonable yes mm -hmm. So that was one comment that I think most people are picking up on. Questions from anybody else? They're not questions. We're in the comments. Uh, I have one very minor comment. That is on the trash enclosure detail. It looked like the hardy board was possibly unbacked. I don't know if the tensile strength of the hardy board really allows for a big panel that doesn't have any backing behind it. It can be very susceptible to just kicking it in. Um, so I couldn't determine from the detail if, if there was, in fact, plywood backing or some sort of the heavy gauge sheet metal backing. It would be a concern just for maintenance and, and kind of visual um, continuity over time. 
You want to just make it an FYI? I think it's an FYI, yeah. Because it's more having to do with the durability and maintenance for your end. Sure. Sure. Um, but design-wise, if people have any concern about the trash enclosure, speak now or we'll just keep going forward. I, I have a concern that, uh, that the, you know, this is, um, it wants to be heavy timber or it wants to be some kind of a plank and frame and somehow it isn't. It it's kind of looks tacky with a with a, a, a sheet ply almost simulated plywood. So I would urge you to just get either hardy plank or regular plank, wood planks, T and G, and have you know vertical planking on all the panels. And use your wood frame and so forth as part of as a way of stiffening that. Um, but I, I think the plywood, you know, the, the uh, wood grained hardy board doesn't look right. Okay, thank you. Does anyone else want to chime in on that? Either they concur or they don't see that as that. I, I concur. 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 Okay. That's fine. So let's move on to another topic. Anything else? Mm. I have one mild comment. Is this dark? Um, sky compatible? Is the top of this light fixture the solid? Picture they showed said yes. was. Yes. It was. Okay. The picture they said. The yeah. picture showed it, but I just want to make sure. Perfect. Yes. That's all. It's the, an LED fixture, by the way, too. So. Okay. Anything else? So let's formulate a motion and um, make a decision on how we want to move forward. I'm sorry. So that picture is the one with the solid top, though, because the one I looked at looked like it had um, glass all the way. Up over the top as well. Is it that image? Yeah. Yes, it's solid top. Okay. It's kind of confusing. The, one of the detail shots, I think, is what it shows. But I think it's just okay. trying to show you some of the detail versus. Okay. But yes, no. We'll make a note in our motion that we understand it to be a solid top, dark sky fixture. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Mr. Chair. Yes. Um, I think I'm ready to make a motion. Okay. Uh, so uh, I'll make a motion for project design approval. Um, with the following comments to um, number one eliminate the four inch uh, well the, eliminate the raised planter wall at the Milpa Street sidewalk um, for two uh, use uh, real wood vertical planks at the trash enclosure doors uh, clarify uh, existing shrubs uh, and or other plantings that are to remain in all the planter areas. In particular concern are the ones, the two large shrubs along the tall wall at Mason Street. Um, and it's uh, understood that the, the pole fixtures are, have a solid top and are dark sky compliant. Perfect. Is there someone who wants to second that motion? We could return to the uh, consent calendar for, to cover the remaining details that we've just mentioned. Can I add to that? You can second it first and add to it. Second, and um, I'd like to add, include the landscape compliance statement on your landscape sheet, the city requirement on the website. On the on the ABR sets. Yes. Okay. Because uh, what what gets reviewed at consent will go straight. You'll fi file all those at the building department. So. And include specific callouts on each plant symbol, explaining what it is. I'm sorry. Include the callouts for what? Include uh, the species. The species and size on the call-outs for the plant material. The, the problem is that the legend shows, um, you know, all of that information, but the, the plant itself does not tell us what's what. So we need to have a call-out that points specifically to each symbol that says what it is on the plan. This, it's a preliminary level landscape plan at this point. It needs to be construction documents level. Okay. So there's additional information about the quantity and spacing of the proposed planting? Mm -hmm. 
And then I had one minor thing is when you come back to final on consent is to bring a color board that can be put in the project file, which is separate from the, the color sheets that you have right here. It's the one you, you should already have it. If she already, Susan, I, should, do we have I was going to ask yeah. you, but then you made reference to the thing that was in your car. Do you have a color board for the yeah. file? Okay, never mind. Scratch that. I wanted to make sure we had it. I just wanted to make sure that we had a color board. Mr. Chair, can I, can I add one more comment? Sure. Um, it could be taken as a suggestion. I was just noticing that the, you know, the existing um, fascia and gutter and downspout detail is a dark brown, which is kind of more traditionally used with um, as, a, as a fascia edge detail with Spanish tile and I'm building with Spanish tile. So just a suggestion to, to change that, the fascia and gutter color to be the Benjamin Moore, uh, the darker Benjamin Moore color, the uh, white all brown, instead of the lighter color, the buff that's shown. That works. I, I, let's, um, I just make that a comment from you on, on your own. If they want to make a change, they come back to with revised drawings. Is well, they're coming back to consent anyway. Yeah. So. I, 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 I support Kirk. I think it would enhance the project yeah. to have the dark brown fascia. Well, well, straw poll would say yeah. Personally, I don't like the brown, the dark brown. Yeah, it's, I mean, a white, it's more of a know. design flair, and we shouldn't be dictating it to that level of no, exactness. I, mean, I, 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 um, I don't like the dark brown wall. <laughs> so you don't want me to mix boards. You have a mixed board. You're want. the designer. You get okay. to pick what yeah. you want. Plus, well, you no, I'm I'm doing the consent review, and that's so that's my suggestion. So next time you come here, <laughs> <laughs> okay, okay. That's before, fair enough. Before June uh, Mr. Chair, 20. it is with the, it is within the purview of the ABR to ch to say reverse these colors, or we would like to see this darker. It's entirely within your purview to ask for that. Well, I would. Suggest that we get we help this uh, applicant streamline the process because we obviously have two different opinions about the colors, and Kirk and I are the ones who are reviewing the consent. And, and in the and case myself. where there's differing opinions, then it's typically you would take a straw vote. Well, I would appreciate it. All right, how many people are okay with the colors that are presented today? All right. What's um, that? What that means is what? What color is that? The colors that are presented today, the way it is, which is going to be the lighter buff for the fascia. Okay. Mm -hmm. So there was three. So how so many people three. would rather see a darker brown, like, similar to the type A Benjamin Moore for the fascia? I'm okay with that for the fascia, but it's the dark brown that's suggested for the stucco color in that tower portion or the corner of the building. That's not okay with me. It's white now. It's well, currently I white. was thinking just the metal fascia. Yeah, just I don't think that was part of the conversation. Fascia, yeah, I was just talking about the fascia well, and the gutter. Well, it's part of the scope, right? And downspouts. Yeah. yeah. To have those but be the, dark, because that is traditional. Right. I would leave this alone. I, I rather like the right there. And then what about this one board, the actual fascia board? Mm, I'm okay with that. Gutter. The yeah. fascia and the gutter board would be That's this? That's what I'm talking about. Yeah. yeah. I'm okay with that. Okay, so then add to your motion um, that you would like to see the fascia and the gutter to be painted the A, which is the Benjamin Moore. And downspout, right? And downspout. Yep. So does that mean the soft fit is the same color too? <laughs> it's going to be in our minutes, which will be accessible yeah. online. The video will be accessible online. I mean, we keep the soft fit, the, no. light, the lighter color. Yeah, no. I wouldn't do the soft fit, the dark color now. So but then it looks like you glue of uh, a dark trim to the right white soft fit, then it looks odd to you. Well, what's the soffit detail? Is it it's plaster? It's a flat. It's soffit, a flat soffit. Right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's you know I think the much stronger detail when the soffit and the facial the same color instead of having two different colors and you it's almost like a because the facial is only like an inch and a half of wood. Well, it's the underside is the gutter. You see the gutter, so you get you oh. have a break between the underside of the fascia oh, and the, the gutter, gutter. You have a facial. So oh, facial. I, 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 I'm going to stick with my comments, and if people don't agree, that's fine. I mean, I. Sorry. I'm, I'm, is, is, the, is, the, is that color brown that they're proposing for the stucco?
Uh, is everyone besides me, except me, okay with that? Yeah. Well, well, yeah, we're not yeah. All, we were just planning on painting the, the base ship. We're, it's all existing. Right. There's no, we're, right. We propose no changes to it other than the colors. So. Yeah, we have this photograph. Sure. Okay. This uh, photograph. I don't have them. I'm in favor of painting the metal brown. I'm, I'm, I'm on the fence about the fascia and the soffit because of the, because of this issue of brown, it looking like a like a surface treated a surface color. So soffit's going to be the same color as the walls. So that is going to continue up under the soffit because it's a flat soffit. I agree. That's and right. it's plaster. It's clear. The break happens at the gutter. And the fascia above the gutter. That's where I'm seeing. That's what I'm saying should be a dark yeah. brown, which is all over the city. Right. So that's. As you explained it, I'm okay. So let me ask a question about the tile color. The color that you show in these elevations it's does not appear to be the match color of the photographs. And we're is not... it in fact a, 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 a reddish brown, or is it? Oh yeah. Oh, yeah. So it's not a buff color like that. No. No. It's okay. The wrong then color. I, I support the the, the, dark, right. the dark. It's red. Fashion. There are no proposed changes to the So, Kurt, would you mind adding to your motion the comments that you want to see for the fascia and the downspots? Well, you got them. I already you have. Them. I have suggest um, changing the no. fascia, no. gutter, and downspot color to the darker Benjamin Moore color. So Is that correct? Take out the yep. word suggest, and it's a directive. Very good. Just, just to also another note about paint colors that it's understood that the guardrails and any other uh, metal, exposed metal, is that, is that a, uh, a grill, a metal grill? That's so. existing, and we just caught that in the parking lot. I, I was not going to leave that on there. That's something Blockbuster put on there. Okay. Well, just, just uh, to specify. Uh, a black for the guardrails. That's all I'm looking for. There you go. A black color. A black color. OK. Mm -hmm. You want it on there, too? Yes. Okay. Oh, come on. OK. So it was a. And this will so need the, the color designations and names on it as well, the typical color board. So the file. motion was made by board member Gradine and seconded by board member Miller and we have the comments and it was uh, project design approval and continued how long to consent when will you be able to come back with uh, final drawings incorporating all of these changes we can make it next week or two weeks or indefinite and sets at one o'clock on Mondays 23rd yeah, could I are going to be up here for the fire service that we're starting in Milpas. So two, two weeks to weeks, the right? 23rd? No, it, it's just the architectural exterior stuff that addresses. It doesn't have to be the building department set, but it, the more you add to it, the... Right. But essentially, it's all the exterior details. details. Okay. It's this set with the comments, with the changes. The changes, the changes and additional... All exterior details, like the wall sections through the teller window, all of those items. He's not changing anything. All he has here is, is storefront details and his ATM detail. That's all he's changing on the outside of the building. Okay. But the landscape plan needs to be updated to a construction document. Level. 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 Yeah. Um, uh, 23rd. You want to just say indefinite, and then when you sub, you know, you can give me an email or call. Well, we'll I can tell you what it's done. I'll, right. I'll commit to the 23rd. Hmm? Okay. okay. I will commit to the 23rd. Oh, okay. Right. Yeah, no. If I. <laughs> Okay, you're on tape. <laughs> so I'll be here. <laughs> All right, with that, I'll call for a vote. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Abstain. I abstain because I wasn't here for the last review. All right. I didn't review uh, I'll, I'll announce a 10 day appeal period. And other than that, you're good to go. You cannot vote? No, okay. I just said Take two I abstain because I didn't review that. We are on I item four. I'm so glad you came early. I know. <laughs> <laughs> But they were presenting. Uh, Mr. Chairman, we saw it last time, and we didn't. I was not at the last meeting. Okay. And it was just so that's why I'm saying. Yeah. And I did not review.
Did you, you want to abstain from that vote? Bright yellow. I want to abstain because I made comments. Yeah, yeah. But uh, I, I, I will abstain if I have to. Yeah, we don't, we don't we don't allow that dark okay. brown anywhere. It's on record tape. Courtney said I don't have to. See you later. All right. Thanks. So we are on item four, which is 121 South Voluntaro yeah. Street. Action may be taken okay. if sufficient information is provided. Last resu reviewed on August 14th. Uh, certainly. Thank you. Okay, last motion. Uh, continued indefinitely. Comment number one, the board appreciates the additional housing unit. Number two, provide a landscape plan showing existing planting to remain and proposed plant species. Three, provide compliance with tier two stormwater management uh, requirements and conditions in, 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 uh, in coordination with the landscape plan and uh, the amount of open space. Provide a pedestrian path of travel from the sidewalk to the proposed new entry to the project. Provide a trash enclosure for all three units with appropriate number of containers. Applicant to modify the west elevation, specifically the second floor cantilevered width. Suggestions include incorporating a broken pitch and changing the building material from, for the cantilevered section and increasing the width of the cantilevered beams over the garage doors. Provide a consistent vocabulary for the fenestration. The board suggests a craftsman style to match the unit, uh, the front unit window, mullion, and proportion details. Uh, add architectural interests to the north elevation, perhaps using dormers over the windows to break up the long fascia board. On the west elevation, lessen the cantilever at the corner. Provide additional interest with a covered entry. Provide staff with required phase one archaeological resources reports. Action with Hopkins Wittash, uh, 5 0. Okay, what's your name for the record? I'm Dawn Sherry, the architect for the project. Um, I was out of the country during the last meeting, and my staff presented the project, and it, at that time it was also under a different owner. Um, we've been working with the the previous owner up until this point and the project is closing escrow and there'll be a new client um, as of I think yesterday or today he was supposed to be here his name's Mike he's not here but oh there he is um, he's right there and um, and so I I'm these were already submitted so I didn't get a chance to confirm but my staff said that everything was taken care of so um, we'll see about that. I was already looking for something that I didn't see, which was a, is this the planting plan? That, this yeah. is the okay, there. proposed plan. Proposed plan. And so we had Kate Dole come in and advise us on some additional planting that would help. What, do you want to go one by one? What um, are those? Sure. Why don't we do that? Um, I think the landscape might have been one of the first ones. Okay, provide a landscape plan showing existing planting to remain and proposed plant species. So these are the existing plants to remain. I had them, I told K2, uh, provide uh, vines and planting along the south property line. Um, she's put in sea lavender, I can see French lavender and nightshade. Um, Along here, we've got new torchalo, and I can't read that upside down, some cyanothus. This is an existing very large um, palm tree. I don't think you need to go too much to okay. detail because okay. Courtney will go through that. And, um, and then the one thing I was looking for was the enhanced um, pathway to the unit and the last time I know when I was here I was the one that told you guys I'm not in favor of kind of directing people to follow the yellow brick road to a unit so 
um, I had thought that I recommended a, um, a permeable paver. Also, keeping in mind tier, um, is it tier two that we have mm -hmm. to? So I thought I had told them that, that we were going to propose a paver in lieu of defining a path. It doesn't look like they did that because I'm seeing a note here that says existing asphalt paving. But I'd like to um, just tell you right now that, that that was one of my intentions to offer. If that was the only way that we could get approval for a really nice driveway and not have a path. The one thing we did do, however, was they should have added a roof over the entryway to define it because. Um, you guys were absolutely right that the doorway wasn't defined. So they did, they added um, a, uh, a roof over the entryway to define it with a light. Um, there's no other door that could be confused as the entryway. There's no door on the west side. Of course, the back side, there aren't any doors. Um, so that was my, my solution to the issue about making it obvious where the unit B door was, was to define it more clearly and then to provide a nice paving to get to it. Um, what was the next Just comment, gosh. Scott? Uh, uh, tier 2 stormwater management compliance. You've done that? I'm sure, it, I'm sure they incorporated it in here somewhere on the site plan. I don't know what those, all those requirements We just need it before final. But, right. There. Th these are the compliance notes. This can be done. Bounce bouts, existing site drainage shall remain and serve. Existing site drainage shall remain and serve. So we okay. can confirm that with staff, but what was the next thing? Uh, we talked about the pedestrian walk trash enclosure for all three years. Mm. So we, we chose to hide it in this corner back here so that when you come down the driveway you don't see it. Um, it de it's not in the way of anybody's private open yard area. This is the front unit's open yard. This is the rear units, and the upper unit has their balcony, and then everybody has access to this really nice um, open yard area that's kind of off to the side. So we put the trash enclosure up, um, you know, in this hidden area. And this is also the backup area for this parking spot um, to maneuver. So we thought it was a good use of getting to the trash and then also access to the trash and the location. So that's where we put that. Great. And uh, modify the west elevation, specifically the second floor cantilever width. We decreased the cantilever and, um, and then we also did, decided to do a split pitch off of it. Um, you can see that here, and we we thought that I think it was Howard's suggestion to um, break up the material choice on that, and we thought that was a good idea. It lightened up the um, the element and kind of distinguished it from the rest of the building and made it look you know lighter and um, provided some texture to the building. We also picked that up on the dormers as well. And we, I think there was a comment about enlarging and or confirming the sizes of the supports for the yeah. cantilever. Um, Do you have a detail or showing what that means? I think built no, member I think so. sizes. Did you say on there at all? Mm -hmm. enclosures. This is the guardrail. Deck guardrail. Okay, is it that. this okay. one? No, it's a fascia. It's the fascia. You know what we're looking for. Yeah. What's represented on the elevation is the entrance. This is like a six. Uh, or it looks like a four six, by six by ten. Um, okay. I know it didn't look sufficient before. I told them okay. what to do, but I can't. 
We should have figured that out. Um, move on. There was, what else was there? Uh, provide a consistent vocabulary for the fenestration. Um, the only window that has the breakups is the picture window on okay. the north. And all the other ones are consistent now. Okay. Uh, add architectural interest to the north elevation, perhaps using dormers or windows to break up the long fascia. Let's see. So we added a little dormer over the back. Mm -hmm. um, this is already a shed roof. Uh, not a whole lot I really wanted to do on the back. Um, but okay. Just, okay. that looked simple to me and just sure. simple. Uh, this last one I think we've covered already on the west elevation, less than the cantilever at the corner. And you, you pulled it here. off the corner, basically. Oh, this is all over the same yeah, thing. and we pulled it off here. We pushed it back, which I thought was a really good suggestion there. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. should also point out you have the wood siding for this piece, and you have plaster for this piece, so there's two different materials. Right, because this is a different element. This is The only wood is that is the piece that pops out. Mm -hmm. And that is everything on the list. Great. Anything else you want to add to your presentation? Um, no, just that if the only way I'm going to avoid doing a, you know, and this is something that I haven't even gone over with the, the new owner because we haven't had a chance to meet since he closed escrow, but so I don't even know what he's willing to do in terms of maybe he does want the defined pathway down the driveway, but um, it would be my preference to provide um, more of an enhanced paving. What do you, what that's do you think that's about not, that? Yeah. An enhanced paving in lieu of an enhanced walkway you, that just goes to that door? Excuse me. I have to address the board. And well, if he okay. wants to come up, he's welcome to come up and identify himself for the record. Okay. Well, this, let's just move on. I got a nod. Okay. <laughs> so with that, uh, is there anyone from the public wishing to address the board on this project? Seeing none, does staff have any letters? Does not, do not back to the board for questions of the applicant in any particular order. I'll start. So in our last meeting, uh, now by the way, this thing says here the project was last reviewed August 14th, 2014, which is in fact a future date. Is that... Uh, <laughs> what is it? Was that oh, long? Okay. No, but we just saw this. Right. It was a few weeks back. This was only a few weeks ago. It was here sometimes in, in May because I was gone. And I think Lauren, I was and gone. Young Bay. It was May, and then it must have been May 27th. Before that, too. Back to the future. Mm -hmm. yeah. So staff will correct that. Thank you, okay. Howard. I didn't even catch so, that. So um, I remember April. making comment about this mm -hmm. little shed roof on that you see in profile. Which uh, elevation are you looking at? East and west elevations. Okay. And the, the wall that's against the nearest the property line. Correct. Mm -hmm. And I was concerned the pr previously about um, the fact that you have this box and then you're breaking the box before you reach the uh, exterior wall on the ground floor mm -hmm. and because of that roof angle. So my question is, are you okay with that and uh, structurally and all this, because it'll be a lot of extra work to do structurally. No, I think that because it didn't make it in the minutes, um, and my staff was taking care of the comments, that they, that's obviously something that we would want to do. We just want to raise that plate enough to okay. where it sits, to where the rafters sit on that plate. Okay. Mm -hmm. So that would be my question and my comment. And I would agree mm -hmm. that basically yes. these floor joists come to this yeah, just, wall, this, this comes pops up, up mm -hmm. and that, that uh, roof overhang can only be a foot because it's um, high fire, not high fire, but isn't it a three foot setback right here? You're, um, yeah, technically you're allowed to encroach one two feet into a, an interior setback, but I think that a one foot overhang looks more appropriate. I agree with you. Yeah, I'm thinking it's gonna be a one footer. And that'll. That's the north elevation, right? I have one and that'll quick actually question. pull all of that up, but then you just change it to a 4 and 12 roof pitch if you run into problems with that window. I have a quick You're question. Yeah. Dylan, mm -hmm. do you see a problem um, moving the single car garage door over so it's in alignment with that pop out above it? Um, it's only, it looks, appears to be like 
six to 12 inches only. So you would have to move it over. Um, garage door, I probably can't move over because I'm probably going to need a shear wall here, but I could, I could just bring this element out in line another foot mm -hmm. and then move that over. It'd still be offset. It'd still right. be a different element. So I would rather not move the garage door and just push that element closer. That's a good suggestion. That's it for me. Okay, okay. good call. Quick question. Scott. Uh, are you going to have any gutters? And downspouts? Mm hmm Okay, so it would just be helpful to see where the downspouts are. Here. Well, no, no, that'll be the comment to us. <laughs> yeah. Is that required for preliminary design approval? I don't no, know if it's not technically required, but it sometimes helps. It can inform design decisions. They'll look good. Well, now that all we right. want to have all the stormwater management stuff, we've got to show where the downspouts are. We will up. show that for final. Okay. Mr. Chair, I have a couple questions. You're up. Um, I was just wondering how the, the new building relates to the f existing front building. There's commonalities of detailing or roof pitch or color or something that's planned to relate the two? Let me see the front building again. I think it's stuck up. Mm -hmm. You know, it has a hip roof, very sh mm -hmm. shallow pitch. It looks like I don't see the pitch on the roof. 7 and 12 it's is a, kind of it's steep. It's kind of a bungalow style, right. loosely a loose translation of a bungalow style, very simple. Right. Um, it, the bungalow style doesn't really fit with the two-story structure, so we went more with the, the cottage look. It just, um, the, the thicker columns um, don't really, we looked at that at first when we were trying to determine what style, and we thought, okay, well, let's just pick a common material of stucco, and, you know, we could pick it up with the colors, and we could pick it up with the color of the trim, and we could also pick it up with the color of the roof, but the, other than this one bungalow element, um, the bungalow element just didn't work for the two-story, in my opinion. Um, Don, do you have details on the trim boards that you have called out around each window? Do I have they, the, the width on them? I, I'm trying to grasp the scale of this. It'll be a two by trim. Two by in width. This did because I wasn't here and I apologize. Oh, two by in depth. Two by in depth. Uh, because it's stucco, that makes sense. Because mm -hmm. we want to get that relief. But these are sliding doors, trim. Finish. It could be a condition of approval because I wouldn't have done anything but a two by anyway on this project. So, but the width and the, the sides. Um, what was the comment? I wasn't paying the attention. The width. She wants the, to know what this width is. On your trim boards? Yeah, the trim board width. I was going to say that to provide um, additional detailing, we can move on if it's not noted clear enough for us at this point. This is that's probably going to be. Um, but just saying new detail or no, that, yeah. It's going to be two by depth and whatever's appropriate as far as width. Um, probably be. What is it on the front house? That looked like they're fairly wide on the back house. It'll probably be a, um, a two by six. Anything else from anybody else? Questions or comments? There's a couple small. Are we in comments then, or we can roll into comments? Um, Howard, why don't you go, and then we'll go to Scott. Okay, um, the dormer window, uh, which is above the balcony, uh, needs some lines in it so that it matches the other dormers. Is it vertical siding? Oh, that one. Yeah. Yeah. And also, where the uh, dormers uh, come down into the roof, there should be a double line there for the, uh, the flashing, flashing that comes up and, you know, where the mm -hmm. siding terminates and the flashing sort of separates from the roof. Just some little detail. Yeah, and I also need, I could have shown this shingles too, 
you know, a lot of details on that. So, excuse me, a board member, so you said dormer window above balcony needs uh, needs needs uh, to uh, indication of siding to indicate the side the is it wood siding yeah that dormer window um, mm -hmm. trim um, wood siding got um, inadvertently omitted from the drawing okay. and then the second comment you said was was to show the flashing at the base of the dormers above the roof This is a comments only at this point? No. Um, we have a choice of making, um, we could say project design approval or return it back to full board. But right now, we're just making comments. Mm -hmm. you, Scott, you're up. Sure, I can go. I think uh, everything you've done is great. Uh, I think the project is vastly improved from what we saw last time, and I think the what you've done with the cantilever makes a lot of sense. I, I think that the comment about aligning the cantilever with the garage door is a very good one, and I'm okay with moving the cantilever out, increasing it just a bit uh, to the side to align with the garage door. I think it's a great, great uh, suggestion. Uh, on the whole, I'm ready to grant his approval. Okay. Sure. Yeah. Um, I just think there should be more of a relationship of the basic uh, massing of the building to or details and or details to the front building. Um, I'm not sure why there's a 7 and 12 pitch when the, f when the front building has a like 2 and 12 or less. Um, so uh, those would be my comments. The, oh, and then also I'm not sure why the, you know, the only breakups that are shown are on the north side. Uh, it seems like they should be east elevation. Oh, the east. But that's still facing the back of the property, if I'm correct, right? Facing the back unit, yeah. yeah. Um, I'm wondering if the windows on the west elevation should be, you know, pick up some of the detailing that's on the front house to get some some more relationship between the, the two buildings. That's sympathetic. Do we have any anybody else kind of jump in who's looked at the photographs and see if they're concerned with the? But you, oh, let me, I'm sorry. Let me just. Uh, couch those comments. I was not here the last time this was reviewed, so I didn't have a chance to comment on it before, so, you know, we can, I can even abstain on this. Mm -hmm. Well, uh, what I was noticing is that these do have mullions, and um, the rear one has vertical, like, double hung, and the front one had the row of little square windows across the top, and, and there's a way that you can do something to make this a little funner that's not being shown and you're choosing not to for one reason or another. We could put the small windows in. This yes. was a this is a rental property. I know that doesn't matter to the board, but if it's going to be a requirement and if the board feels that the, it would make it relate more to the front of the house, that would be one thing that that we'd be willing to do. Well, what, why was the what was the logic for having this be the one and only window for millions? Just because it's a large expanse of, of clear glass. And we felt that it's because it was a picture window, it would look better. I could see. Are the windows wood or are they some other material? They're going to be clad or wood. Okay. Then it wouldn't be too difficult to do kind of the Queen Anne style yeah. mullions to match the front. Yeah, it might look nice. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I didn't know it had a title. It does. <laughs> I just call it Craftsman style at Queen Anne. Anything else from anybody else? Okay, one more. Um, um, Tip had my attention. Should I, should I comment since I was not at the last meeting, or should I just abstain? You can comment, and maybe your 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 comments valid. If, excuse me, Mr. Chair. Um, if you've missed the last meeting, uh, you need to access the video yeah. and watch it, mm -hmm. and or come in and look at the the previous mm -hmm. plans. Mm -hmm and read the minutes. Mm -hmm. So if you had a chance to do that, then you can go ahead and comment. Otherwise, we'd kind of discourage that because yeah, you I, didn't. I, yeah, go I ahead. read the minutes, but I didn't review the video. But it's OK. okay. I, I can you, don't have to do, yeah. you don't have to do both, but we do want you to look at the plans yeah, sure. that were reviewed and read the minutes. OK, so that's the answer. Give it a motion. Oh, so. 
Uh, one very small comment, and that is that these window sills, which underscore all size windows and so forth, would be, it would, they would look much nicer and they would actually relate to the building in front more if, in fact, the sills were made a little thicker and if they were extended beyond the uh, jams uh, at the bottom so that the kind of the, the uh, trim actually sits on the sill. They were uh, supposed to be, Howard, sorry. Board, right? Yeah, yeah, they were supposed to be. And I wasn't here, and I was inaccessible. I would, so. do, I would make that I a apologize. standard detail for your, all your windows. Mm -hmm. yeah, it's mm -hmm. just a nice way to. So one of the comments is to provide window details with sizes noted, because mm -hmm. the window details were pretty raw. OK. OK. Anything else? Was the landscaping understandable? Mm -hmm. Okay, and then for final, you need the irrigation and anything else? Irrigation and the compliance statement. Okay. So. so let's roll this into a motion and go out for dinner. Uh, you want to do it? Um, go for it. I'll take a few notes. All right. Okay, uh, the board appreciates the improvements made to the plan and uh, finds that can leave acceptable. Uh, align the smaller garage door with the cantilever above. It's acceptable to adjust the cantilever uh, length. Uh, Accordingly. Along with, pardon me? Accordingly. Accordingly. Uh, provide uh, window details to include, I believe it's called a skirt board below the, the, the uh, sill of the window. Uh, and note sizes of the trim pieces. Mm -hmm. uh, match, uh, where appropriate, match the uh, window breakups of the front house. And uh, resolve the driveway path issue, either with uh, permeable pavers throughout the driveway or, or a path. That's it. Okay, does someone want to sit? I'll second the motion. Here. If, if I can add one little thing, please Go for it. Uh, add the comment about raising the shed roof and back so that oh. it creates a structural box so that he doesn't have to have an angled, you know, no, diaphragm. No structural heroic. Mm -hmm. okay. And then Thank you. the maker of the motion <laughs> and the seconder, Howard, um, add, I'd like to suggest that we add the gutters and downspout information to the elevation and the site plan. And the um, please to provide a, a detail for the overhang indicating the corbel sizes. At the cantilever. At the cantilever um, building portion and at the cantilever deck. I didn't study to see the deck railing detail, but that's all together. And under the comment about the, the uh, trim and a uh, little apron under there, would you call it a little sill board or whatever it is? A skirt board, I think. Skirt board to, uh, to thicken the sill and extend it beyond the trim mm -hmm. So it looks a little more craftsman-like. Okay. And this is going yeah. to be for project design approval with in indefinite continuance back to consent. Um, because you made the motion. We can just read this. Exactly. Into the we need to read into the motion, but CEQA. The architectural board of review finds that the project qualifies for an exemption from further environmental review under CEQA guidelines section 15183 based on the city staff analysis and CEQA certificate of determination on file for this project. Okay, with that, we have a first and a second. Are there any other discussions? Not a call for a vote, and if you weren't here, you can abstain. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Abstentions. We have three abstentions. Thank you, guys. Cool. Cool. Tip. Gradine and uh, Stephanie. Who? Me. Tim. Hey, Don. And with that, we'll call it a night. Thank you. You and I are just like a couple of tots running across a meadow. Picking up lots of forget-me-nots